then apart from this we also have what is it synapse okay so these are all the services guys these are all what is that services okay boss let us make this session an interactive session i want you guys to interact with me during this uh, session <clears throat> so now guys these are all the services of the microsoft provided here okay in the form of what service in the form of what service so what is that you have it as your data bricks as your data factory and the synapse etc now guys before we go ahead with this let us try to understand first two things what is that what is a clouds and what is on premises what is clouds and what is on premises what is cloud and what is on premises okay what is on premises and what is the clouds okay so we also call it as what on prem we also call it as what on prem so what is the on prem and what is the clouds let us try to understand this yes guys any uh, there is nothing but uh, any idea about this clouds anyways i'll explain you but i want you guys to tell me something what are basically clouds and on prem if you have any idea yeah go ahead so cloud is uh, we can access from anywhere mm -hmm. uh, and on premises uh, is something like we the data or the services that are hosted in our premises like if some company is uh, having some data that their their own server their own network everything is set up for themselves within their premises so we call it as prem on premises and if it is a cloud so like azure Amazon web service, the Google is out. So their data is not uh, present in their premises. So they don't need to uh, work upon the server management, uh, network, ex hardware, etc. Yes, this is yes. What Very we good. can say. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Okay. Now, guys, so let us try to understand first of all what is the clouds and what is on premises. Okay. So what Gaurav said is perfectly fine. Now, guys, let us elaborate it and uh, let us try to. Yeah, uh, Arvind, tell me. Sir, can you provide uh, Azure portal for us? Azure portal hmm. means A Azure portal, sir. Azure login portal for practice. Practice. It requires basically. We'll discuss it after the class. I'll discuss it. The thing. Okay, please. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay. Now, let us try to understand first of all what is basically the clouds and on premises. So, guys, before we move ahead with what is a cloud and what is an on-premise system, okay, let us try to see an example here. I'm just giving you an example, okay, guys. So, all of us having the mobiles, am I right, guys? We all have the mobile phones, am I right? Every one of us is using a mobile phone nowadays, am I right, guys? Every one of us is using the mobile phone, and even the mobile phone, what type of mobile phones we are using? Smartphones, am I right, guys? Smartphones. Every one of us has a smartphone, irrespective of the brand you have it. Yes, guys, everyone is using the smartphone or not? Please. Yes. Yes. What about rest of all? You people are not using this uh, smartphone, yes, yes. guys? Yes, we are using. Yes, sir. Yeah, we are so using. now, guys, using. when we okay, when we use the smartphone, we will have yes, we will have we will have memory in your mobile phone. Am I right, guys? You will have memory in your mobile phone. Now tell me. What will what what is the amount of memory you will have in your mobile phone? Can you tell me? Whichever the phone you are using it. What is 8 that? GB. 8 GB is uh, one memory. And apart from this, yes, guys. Anyone else who is using the mobile phone? What is your memory? Tell me now. Up to what level uh, you can store? Uh, 12 GB. 12 GB. Uh, 12 GB. If somebody is using the iPhone. So the iPhone is providing the highest memory as what? 256 GB. Am I right, guys? Am I right? Everyone. You have the 256 GB provided by the iPhone. Likewise, every one of us has a smartphone and every one of us has the memory in our mobile phone. Now tell me why this memory is used. Why are you using this memory? Can you tell me, guys? I'll talk in your language only. Why, why do we use this memory? Can you tell me, guys? If it is a RAM so for performance, we are using it. If it is storage for storing local data. Yes, exactly. That is nothing but basically, basically what we do here is to store the information in your uh, mobile phone. That is in the form of photographs, videos, or some contacts 
or whatever the type of data you will have it whatever the type of data you will have it to store that particular data we use the mobile phone memory isn't it or not now guys suppose you have a la large amount of uh, you know videos and uh, photos in your mobile phone which is important for you and you have saved it in your mobile phone and now your mobile phone memory is full the whole 256 gb can you see here the whole 256 gb memory is full now how um, the to whole 256 gb memory is full now so now guys tell me now if the whole 256 gb memory is full what is the other way you adopt it for extra memory can you tell me we can buy a uh, this yes you can buy an sd card that is scan disk card isn't it or not am i right guys you can buy a sd card of more memory some post 32 gb i have bought it or else even uh, you have what is that uh, around uh, some 256 gb uh, you got it sd card that is also full now so now do you have any slots in your mobile phone to enter one more sd card guys you will be having and one more uh, slot to enter into your sd card or uh, that is mobile phone or not only one sd card slot is provided in the mobile phones whereas uh, apart from this one more uh, that is one is full so do you provide can you provide or can you store that uh, uh, data by buying one more uh, sd card and inserting it in your mobile phone that means can you insert two sd cards in your mobile phone tell me now guys can you insert two sd cards at a time in your mobile phone no no that not is not possible no yeah only one slot is given so okay. you can enter up to here so 256 gb you can store it so this is nothing but the configuration of a mobile phone whereas whereas everyone just concentrate well whereas guys as you have a memory suppose you have to store here suppose guys you have to store a memory of 1000 gb more that means already you saved the memory of 256 gb plus 256 gb that means how much gb 512 okay am i right guys 512 512 memory gb data is already full in your mobile phone 512 gb data is already full in your mobile phone now i require to store one more 1000 gb one more 1000 gb guys one more 1000 gb data you need to store it in my mobile phone now tell me what is the alternative do you have it uh definitely we can have a cloud based uh, storage devices very good that's a okay that's a that's a good answer now guys suppose now the question is suppose i have how much memory in my mobile phone can you tell me now what is the amount of memory i have it right now 512 gb how much memory of uh, there is how much amount of memory i have in mobile phone my uh, uh, how much amount of memory we have it in my mobile phone 512 gb guys suddenly i lost my mobile phone one day suddenly i lost my mobile phone one day so now guys tell me now if i lost my mobile phone 512 gb data which is there in my mobile phone which is there in internal memory of my mobile phone and as well as in the sd card as well as in the sd card will it be there or will it okay, will i have to use lose the same uh, everything will be lost uh, everything is that. lost yes? yes yeah everything is lost siri you want to tell something siri you want to tell something okay if not just put it in yourself in mute mode okay so okay so now guys everything will be lost i will be losing everything that is 512 gb data but can i recover that even if i buy a mobile phone yes guys can i recover that is it is there any way yes we have if we store it in a, uh, if we store it in a uh, any online platform so no not yeah. i'm not talking about the online platform now okay. i lost my mobile phone everything is there in my mobile phone only okay uh, that is 512 gb of data is there in my mobile phone yes. i lost my mobile phone can i recover it no nope. uh, not at all no way to recover it am i right guys yes. no way to recover mobile phone gone means my data is gone everything is gone i'll not get it is it or not i'll not get anything so whereas in order to overcome this problem in order to overcome this problem what is the alternative we use it in order to overcome this problem we use an alternative what is it alternative that is nothing but if we store this 512 gb data along with my mobile phone if i store it in a, a copy of it a copy of it into my google drive google drive so now guys 
can i recover it if i store it in the google drive tell me now my data yes. 512 gb data is st- stored in my mobile phone as well as the same data is stored even in the google drive can i recover it back even if i lose my mobile phone yes yes i yes. can recover it this is a way there is a way now guys but what is the problem here the problem here is that the problem here is that the google drive provides a default memory of 15 gb only how much memory does it a google drive and your google account gets it with uh, this thing can you tell me guys yeah how much memory you'll get it tell me now you'll get the 15 gb i want an interactive session guys only one or two people are interacting what about rest of you yes guys please interact with me okay guys so here you have what is that 15 gb memory is by default provided by the google isn't it or not but how much memory i need to store it right now 512 mgb what is that 512 gb so what is it you need to do tell me now what is it you need to do guys yeah buy storage very good we need to buy the storage we need to buy the yes guys buy the storage okay that means you will have to pay some cost guys you will have to pay some cost and buy the storage of 512 gb that means so they will charge you on the yearly basis or they will charge you on the quarterly basis or even some on the monthly basis you can buy it and you can store it okay so whereas after storing the data into my google drive even if i lost my mobile phone the last data can be recovered it back simply what i need to do i need to buy a mobile phone new mobile phone new handset and in that handset we need to configure my mail id along with my password and use an option called synchronize so automatically everything which is there in the drive will be retrieve it back will be retrieve it back and restore it to my mobile phone am i right guys yes, yes am i right yes yes so yes. now yes, yes. now guys who is taking care the security of your data who is taking care of the security of your data tell me now google google okay who is t- the google is taking the security of your data that no one should able to access your data unless until the username and password is satisfied am i right guys so google is taking care of your data that means whenever you require it the google will provide you and whereas uh, the security of your data the access of your data everything is a responsibility of google now one fine day now one fine day i immediately uh, left for us so i am there i am there in us now guys i have already configured i have already configured a google drive of 512 gb wherein i have stored the entire data after going there i have changed my number so can i access the data which i have saved in the google drive even after going to us tell me now yes of course yes possible that means obviously i it is possible simply what happens the google drive will work on a, your email id and password am i right guys so if you enter that email id and password you can access the data from anywhere from the globe am i right guys anywhere from the globe so we can say that the access of data the security of data is the responsibility of what is that google am i right guys is the responsibility of what google so unknowingly what you are doing there we all are using the cloud platform isn't it or not unknowingly we all are have moved from no, that is nothing we have moved from what is that this now that is the on premises uh, platform to cloud only that means from the sd cards sd card is your what sd card memory or your mobile phone memory is your sd card memory or your mobile phone memory is on premises memory whereas we have automatically moved from on premises memory and what is that on premises memory and sd card memory to what is that google drive memory that means unknowingly we all have moved to what is that we all have moved to what is it guys cloud system we have already moved to what is that cloud platform am i right guys everyone <coughs> just guys yes, sir. sorry so we have moved to what is yes. that the cloud platform all of us okay so whereas now after moving to the cloud pl- cloud platform it has become easier for us to access the data from any device you require it from any device you require it sharing has also become so easier so whereas security has also become very comfortable okay so whereas only this is possible because of the 
cloud platform whereas whereas as we are an individuals we have a little amount of data when it comes to the business entities what is that business entities will have a very massive amount of data very massive amount of data and they want the data to be secured and access it at whenever the time requires and every time the corporates have fed up by buying the licenses license every time you require a software they need to buy the license they have to pay the cost for the license they need to purchase that software they need to install it and then they have to put the software so in order to avoid that if you require a software don't do it by yourself simply inform your cloud provider simply inform your cloud provider he will buy it for you he will buy the license for you simply he is going to provide you am i right guys simply he is going to provide you it is just like it is just like we go and watch a movie in a theater it is just like we go and watch a movie in the theater now the going and watching a movie in the theater has become the ancient trend isn't it or not nowadays to watch a latest release what is the way we are adopting it guys tell me now what is the way we are adopting it tell me now guys we are adopting the way called what am i audible to everyone what it is very good we are using the platform called what otts yes guys we are using a platform called what is that ott platform okay we are using the platforms called what ott so whereas so ott requires what ott requires what simply it oh, requires okay. yes simply it requires a username simply it requires what is that a username guys it requires a username that is nothing but your mobile phone or mail id whatever it may be and it requires a password it requires a password simply if you enter the same guys simply if you enter the same immediately okay immediately you will able to access it but now guys if you want to watch a latest release latest release what is that you have it tell me now all of you are you there guys yeah am i there are you able to yes, understand yes. everyone please yes so now yes. yeah yeah so what is that you have it pa so simply we need to enter the username and password to uh, get it now i wanted to see a latest release movie what is it you have to subscription to? yeah we need to go for a premium subscription am i right guys you need to go yes. for what is that premium subscription we need to go for what premium subscription okay so you have to pay some cost and buy and watch that movie am i right guys so you can watch it how many times is there any limit for watching that movie no no limit you can watch n number of times you want it you can watch the movie n number of times that means it is in your hands am i right guys so in the same way here also guys here also if you require a software a latest software suppose you require a software called okay uh, sas or we require a software called oracle okay oracle we require it oracle so here you need not buy the license of oracle so here you need not buy the license of sas so sas stand for statistical analysis system so you not buy this simply what we need to do guys simply we need to inform the cloud provider simply we need to inform the cloud provider okay guys simply we need to inform the cloud provider that you require these softwares okay so what is the cloud provider is going to do he is going to buy the license for you so now guys across the globe we have the following cloud providers and the market leaders in cloud providing okay what is that the first one is what is that you have the azure you have what is that azure is from microsoft azure is from what is that microsoft and the second one you have it as what yes guys aws which stands for amazon web services from amazon okay guys and then we have what is that the third who is yes. coming up the uh, market leader is what is that gcp yes. which stand for google cloud google. platform okay so from the google okay from the google and apart from this we also have the cloud provider as sap sap you have might have heard na, sap labs they have come out with their own uh that is nothing but uh that is a, a cloud computing technology with what is the name called what, uh, and uh, the provider is what sap labs okay whereas you have what is that guys you have the oracle cloud you have a oracle cloud oracle has also come out with their 
own uh, cloud. And whereas the Oracle cloud, what is the thing you have it? Oracle is provided by what? Oracle Corporation. Oracle Corporation. Okay, guys. Oracle Corporation. Somebody just put it in the mute mode. That is wrong. Yeah, Prashant. So put it in the mute mode. Okay. So we have what's it? These are all the cloud providers. These are all the cloud providers. We have it. Anyways, the first three are the market leaders. Whereas the first three are considered as the market leaders in providing the cloud technologies. Getting my point, everyone? Yes, everyone. So this is nothing but the cloud technology. We have it. Now, guys, these cloud providers are providing in the form of service. So here you require the Oracle software. You have informed or you require the Oracle software. You have informed your cloud provider called Azure. Your cloud provider is Azure. And you inform him that you need a Oracle software. So now, guys, what happens? The or Azure is going to get in touch with the Oracle is going to buy the software. But here you need the, and they're going to install the same onto their cloud environment. And the same is accessible to you. Whereas all these is divided in the form of guys what is that in the form of service so for that they have divided the cloud services in three categories what is that the first one is called as what eas where the eas stands for what is it guys infrastructure 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 yes guys infrastructure as a service and whereas the second one the service they have provided what is it called as what uh, that is nothing but PS. So, what do you mean, PS, guys? Can you tell me? PS stands for what? Platform, platform as a service. As a service. Yes. Platform, yes, guys, as a service. Very good. Now, the third one, the third services that provided by the uh, cloud is what is it? You have it, CS. So, which stands for what, guys? Service as a platform. Service software as a, as a service. Software as a service. Software as a service. Software as a service. That means if you require any software to be available in your cloud, so at that time you need to raise a request. You need to raise a request. And once you raise a request, what happens? The package will be allocated to you. That means this is provided to you on this much cost. That means hourly or monthly. Can you see here? Hourly, here, hourly, hourly. Or daily, monthly, quarterly, likewise half yearly. Okay. So, likewise, half yearly, all the things are provided to you. That means you have to make the payment either quarterly or monthly or daily or hourly basis. Okay, guys. So, this software is provided to you on the following thing. That means once once you utilize this software and your work is done, simply you need to pay for the service you have used it. Simply you need to pay for the service you have used it. That's it. But not the entire cost. Now, guys, nowadays even you are getting two wheelers on rent. So what is that? How they will get it? You will get the two wheeler on rent. So you go, if, suppose if at all you want to, uh, that is nothing but a move around the city, you need not buy a scooter. You need not borrow it from anyone. Simply, you can you need to approach a that is nothing but the entity who is providing the scooter or rent, and you need to take your scooter. And at the time of giving the scooter, what he says, he says that you have hourly. You can opt it for a hourly buys. That means six hours. I need a scooter. That's it. So you can six hours. You can make out all the tasks and come and give him back. Else, you want a monthly buys, or else you want a uh, that is nothing but yearly wise. So likewise, the all things are provided to you. So whenever you require it, whenever you require it, you need not buy a scooter. In the same way here also, whenever you require any software to be used, okay, to use, you need not buy the software license. Simply you need to inform your cloud provider and cloud provider is going to provide that in the form of service called SAS. That is called as what? Software as a service. Now guys, platform as a service. So what do you mean platform guys? Here, suppose you are dealing with the banking data. Banking data. Now, guys, banking data is considered as the largest amount of data. Am I right, guys? It is called as a huge and large amount of data. So the banking, the banking industry has the 
very massive amount of data. So whenever you require the massive amount of data to be maintained, the operating system called Windows does not support it. The operating system called what is it? Windows does not support it, guys. Most of the times. So at that time, you require to you require to operate it on what is that? Mainframes, or else Unix or Linux. Isn't it or not? Unix or Linux, various operating system do you need to use it? So now, guys, do you need to buy the operating system if you are using the service as a uh, platform as a service, guys? Do you need to buy the platform? That is nothing but uh, uh, operating system, guys. No, we don't need to buy it. Simply, we need to inform our cloud provider that instead of Windows operating system, I want to run my machine on what is that mainframe's operating system. So this operating system is provided by the service provider with a name called what platform as a service getting my point guys yes getting my point in the same way in the same way guys i want some thousand uh pb that is petabyte data so what is that gigabyte terabyte and petabyte so i want thousand petabyte data to be stored here okay so now guys if at all you want to store it Thousand uh, that is GB or uh, thousand uh, petabyte data, thousand petabyte data. We require to generally we require to buy the hard disk, etc. Okay, but here I don't think uh, you have available even the petabyte uh, hard disk is not available in the market. Okay, very rare, I think so. Now, guys, so if you require to store the data in petabytes, so in this case, can you see here? Simply you need not buy the hard disk anything, simply you need to inform your cloud provider that. I wanted to store the thousand petabyte data. So now the cloud provider is going to provide you the storage on the cloud system. It is just like a Google Drive. So you require the Google Drive of how much GB here? 512 GB of Google Drive. You require it. You have informed the uh, that is Google and Google has and Google took some money from you and provided you the space. What is the space you have provided you? 512 GB. Am I right, guys? 512 GB data. They have. That is nothing but storage they have provided you. In the same way, that is also service. That means unknowingly, we are already using the service called what? Yes, guys, we are using the service called what? Infrastructure as a service. We are using the service called what? Infrastructure as a service with the Google, with the Google by using the Google Drive. Am I right, guys? Am I right, guys? Everyone? Yes? Yes. Yeah. So now, this is nothing but these are the services we have it, all of you. So now, so overall, so why do we use the cloud technology? Now you tell me, guys, we use the cloud technology to what is that? Have a, that is nothing but large, massive amount of storage on the cloud. And uh, you can run it on various operating system with a very good security. Okay. With all security and security issues will need not be taken care by you. And whereas whenever you require any software, you need not buy the license of the same. Simply, you need to inform your cloud providers. And these services are provided by the above following cloud providers. The cloud provider will give you the service in the following three categories. What are the three categories? EAS, PAS, and what is that, guys? EAS, PAS, and what is that? CAS. Okay, guys, clear everyone? Yeah, everyone is following or not? Please. Yes, yes. Okay. So next. So now guys, before we move ahead, I would like to go ahead with a very basic thing. So before we understand guys, before we understand what is the Azure Databricks, why the Azure Databricks is used in what situation the Azure Databricks is used. Okay. What is the Azure data engineering? Before I explain you this, where it is used and how it is used, you know that this is a cloud technology, but how it is used and where it is used. To understand that, let us go out from a very basic part here. Very basic. Okay. So let us start from the scratch level, guys. Let us see what is a language. So now, guys, tell me what do you mean by understand? What do you understand by the word called language? Tell me now. What do you understand by the word called language? Yes, guys. Language is nothing but it is a means of communication between two persons. Am I right, guys? Does it make any sense, please? Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, ma that is nothing but language is nothing but it is a means of communication. Language is nothing but it is a means of communication between 
two or a more to understand the conversation and to also share the knowledge and to also share the knowledge just a minute guys just a minute sorry yeah guys uh, <clears throat> sorry so now guys uh, let us we were discussing about the languages okay so language is nothing but what is that it is a means of communication it is what is that a means of communication between two or the more people to understand the conversation see guys you and me are interacting with each other isn't it or not you and me are interacting with each other now so why do we understand why do we interacting what is the necessity of interacting tell me now guys you and me are interacting with each other why to share the knowledge am i right guys to share the knowledge to share the knowledge we are interacting with each other now whereas so to interact and to understand what is the means of communication we are using it tell me now is yes, guys to interact and to understand what is the means of communication we are using it please tell me guys yeah english as the means of communication am i right guys everyone yes. Yes, yes english is a language i am using it to understand this conversation and share the knowledge in the same way whenever you wanted to interact with a computer whenever you wanted to interact with a computer whenever you wanted to interact with a computer guys the computer does not understand our english so for that it requires a computer language to be used for that we use the language called what c c++ oh yes c c++ then we have what is that Java. Yes, Java. Okay, Java. These are all the languages we use to interact with the computer. Now, guys, you and me are interacting with each other. What for? What purpose? What is the purpose of our interaction? To share the knowledge, isn't it or yes. not? To share the knowledge. Yes. In the same way, we interact with the computer for what reason? We interact with the computer in order to what is that? Develop a package or to achieve a task. or to achieve a task so whereas what do you mean by package package is nothing but a ready made application which is used to achieve a task is called as what package now guys suppose my task is i wanted to design my resume in my uh, computer what is the format which you will tell me now yes guys you want to design a resume in your computer what is the format which use in the computer tell me now guys word exactly so word. what is it yes very good we use what is that ms word that is called as what microsoft word document in the same way if at all you want to put the data in a tabular format that is the form of rows and columns then what is the format which use it tell me now guys excel hmm? very good we, we ms excel yes ms excel yes and in the same way i want some kind of presentation to be prepared what is the format which use in the computer tell me now guys what is the format which use in the computer powerpoint very good so ms powerpoint very good pp likewise for different situations PP, PP, yes okay anyways for different situations for different situations guys for different situations different type of okay packages are provided these are called as ready made packages so these packages are developed these packages these are called as what packages these packages are developed these packages are developed by using what is that language what is the language c++ java etc etc okay guys clear now 
so whereas we can say that all the languages are used to develop a package packages are used to achieve a task am i right guys achieve a task whereas as we know that languages are nothing but uh, is used to develop a package that means the languages can be call it here as a technical applications can we call this word guys technical application yes guys can we call this applications can we call this applications as a technical application or not guys please tell me can we yes. call this as a, yes, yes we can yes. call it as a technical application technical. whereas what is the packages packages are ready made na ready made packages are what is it ready made ready to use that's it so this kind of applications is called as what yes guys this called as applications are called as what functional applications these are called as what guys functional applications these are called as what functional applications now guys we have how many type of uh, applications now technical applications and functional applications where technical applications are those where everything the user has to write it that means technically the user has to type this isn't it or not technically the user has to type this applications hence this kind of applications hence this kind of applications are called as what is it technical applications and what about the functional applications so in order to use the microsoft word document guys in order to use the microsoft word document do we need to have the knowledge of c language or not no not required do you need to have the knowledge of c++ or java or not no not required not required so hence whenever you want to use this applications so we require we don't require any kind of knowledge of a language am i right guys so hence these applications are called as what is it guys functional applications these are called as what functional applications so how many kind of applications we have it technical applications we write the where we write the code and functional applications are those where which are used to achieve a specific task whereas if you combine this technical applications and functional applications together guys if we combine the technical applications and functional applications together these uh, a new application will be created that is called as what techno functional that is called as what guys techno functional okay techno functional that is called as what techno functional what do you mean by techno functional can anyone tell me yes guys what do you mean by techno techno functional see guys i don't want to take your names and uh, ask the answers just like the kids so i want everyone to respond it that's better na for you and me the session will be interactive and it will be interesting for you and me so kindly please interact so guys what do you mean by techno function tell me now yes any idea we can use we, we can use the functionality also and we okay. can if you want we can customize using coding very good business logic like, business logic yes yeah, so whereas techno functional applications are nothing but these are the applications which is filled up with technicality and functionality that means 50% of the application will be technical that means where you need to write to the code 50% will be functional 50% will be what is it functional that means you need not write the code some 50% will be predetermined or predefined and 50% where you have to write it or define it so hence this kind of applications are called as what techno functional applications are called as what techno functional applications so under this techno functional applications guys what are the applications we have it so all the erps guys all the erps er comes under what is it techno functional and apart from the erps all the databases guys all the databases comes under what is that techno functional only now before we move ahead let us try to elaborate and see what is an erp then we will see the database guys what do you understand by the word called an erp can you tell me guys erp stands for what enterprise it stands for what enterprise and r stands for what is it guys resource r stands for what resource p stands for what plan whereas together it is called as what enterprise resource plan erp stands for what guys enterprise resource plan whereas enterprise resource plan is nothing but what is that let us try to see this what do you, let us see whenever you are not understanding anything or it is difficult for you to understand 
let's try to uh, split it into the parts. Enterprise. So now tell me, what do you mean enterprise? Tell me now. What do you understand by the word called enterprise? If I'm using the enterprise. Company. Very good. A company. A company. And or an organization. Good. Organization. Institute. Or a business. Yes. Or a business entity. Okay. Or a business entity. Okay. Or a business entity is called as what is that? Enterprise. Whereas every enterprise, guys, requires every enterprise requires guys, what is that? Every resource. enterprise requires resource. So now tell me, what do you understand by the word called resource? If I'm using the word called resource. Now, guys, this is the class going on. Am I right? This is the class going on. Am I right, guys? So to run this class, what are the resources do we require it? Tell me now. Internet. Very good. Uh, any okay. mobile device, like any electronic device. Very good. That is mobile phone, laptop, etc. Yes. Apart from this. Uh, we need, uh, we need a, a common platform to connect with each other. That is called as a, uh, we are using a Zoom application. Zoom, Zoom, yes, application. Zoom application. Yes. Next, apart from this. We need yes, a guys. human resource. I mean, yeah, human people to join, people, people to, to join. join. All this exactly. Whereas, can you see here, guys? Just to run or just to see this class, how what are the resources we have used it? We have used the internet connectivity, we have used a zoom app and the computer, your computer and my computer, your mobile phone or uh, my computer. All these are the resources of the classroom. Am I right, guys? Yes, all these are the resources of the classroom. Whereas, whereas in the same way, the business also has a resource okay so that means the resources are classified or divided into three categories the first one is called as what any uh, business entity requires what is that manpower the any entity requires what is that manpower and apart from the manpower it requires what is that finance yes guys money they require it and the other thing they require it is what assets assets are nothing but machineries etc etc yes. okay so these are all the assets so whereas manpower, finance, and assets, these are called as what? Resources of an enterprise. Resources of an enterprise. And now, guys, what do you mean by P? P stands for what is it, guys? Tell me now. P planning. stands for what? Planning. So P stands for planning. Planning is nothing but, guys, <clears throat> planning is nothing but how to plan your manpower, how to plan your finance, how to plan your assets, how to plan your manpower. How to plan your finance, how to plan your assets, how to plan your manpower, how to plan your finance and how to plan your assets in a best way, in a best way to get the maximum output. Output means what? Output refers to what guys here? When it is a business, the output refers to what? Profits. Pro productivity. Profits, productivity, whatever. Ultimately profit only now. Productivity means profit. So yes. ultimately the profits. So now, guys, can I say like this? How to get the maximum profits from your business? The solution is provided by the application called ERP. Am I right, guys? Am I right? Yes. Enterprise yes, yes. resource plan. Likewise, likewise, guys, on this particular enterprise application, or we can say on this particular domain, Okay, we have a uh, many domains developed on this, on this particular, uh, that is technique, that is called as enterprise resource plan is a technique. On this, we have many domains developed, such as what we have sales and distribution. In short, we call it as SD, MM, which stands for material management. We have the production planning. Okay, and we have what is it? Okay, yes, SCM. Okay, supply chain management. Okay, then we have what is that? Uh, even this, uh, okay, uh, finance. Okay, that is called as FICO. Okay, that is finance. And then we have, what is that? Uh, uh, that is, uh, even we have, what is it? HRMS, which we call it as human resources management system, etc. These are all the domains, guys. These are all the domains of the ERP. We can say the domain. That means how to extract the maximum profits out of sales and distribution. How to extract the maximum prof uh, uh, profits or the productivity out of the material management. How to extract the maximum productivity or profits out of the production planning, supply chain management, finance, how to utilize your finance in the best way to get the maximum outputs and how to manage your employees. That is nothing but given in human resources management. Whereas 
on all these domains we have the softwares developed we say sap hr or hrms actually hrms is the domain of the erp and sap is the software developed on the domain called what hrms okay then when we have oracle ebs oracle ebs ebs is nothing but it is also the same as hrms okay whereas oracle is a guys oracle is a software and ebs can you see it? ebs is what is that you have it ebs is nothing but the domain so which takes care about the human resources getting my point guys all of you getting my point so whereas this is the thing we have it what is that sap and what is that oracle are the software yeah. developed on the domains of the erp and this helps you to get the maximum outputs or the profits from the existing business okay guys clear all of you yes all of you clear with this erp now guys yes now though this yes. is not though this is not related to us i have explained you just for the sake of knowledge that's it okay now guys let us come back and on to the very important part of the techno functional application that is called as a database now from here we are going to deal with our business database so what do you mean by database guys database is nothing but guys database is nothing but a place where what is that information is recorded a place where information is recorded in the form of guys in the form of in the form of tables in the form of what is that tables that is in a tabular format that is a table is a collection of what guys tell me now a table is a collection of what yes guys uh, rows, rows and, and, and columns. columns columns okay a table is a collection of rows and columns so whereas database is also that is database is also an application where it is used to store a massive or a large amount of data and this data is divided or this data is divided into two sub databases that means the database is divided into two parts what is the first part guys the first part the first part of the database the first part of the database guys the first part of the database we can call it here as the yes guys we can call it here as the transaction database transaction database it is called as what transaction db that is called as transaction database and the second part of the database guys the second part the major part of the database that is called as what yes guys that is called as what transaction database and the second part is called as what data warehouse data warehouse am i right guys data warehouse so or else we can also call it as what warehouse database warehouse database getting my point these are the two names we can use it so database is divided into two databases sub databases that is called as a transaction database and the second one is called as what data warehousing or data warehouse so whereas why it is divided what is the necessity of dividing before that i will add one more point here the transaction database is a database where all the detailed records are recorded where all what is that detailed information is recorded and these detailed information or okay these detailed records are used for what is it guys verification verification guys these detailed records are used for what yes guys these detailed records are used for what these detailed records are used for verification and validation that's it and whereas the data which is recorded in a data warehouse is recorded in which manner here guys it is recorded in the summarized manner summarized it is recorded in the summarized manner and these records are used for what is that or these records are used for what is it guys analysis these records are used for what analysis and whereas analysis is nothing but what is that uh, analysis is nothing but uh decision making system am i right guys decision making system that means you can decide anything okay decision making system okay so whereas the data which is the, the data in the data warehouse is recorded in which manner here in the summarized manner and these records are used for analysis and the data which is recorded in the yes guys the data is recorded in a transaction database is used for what verification and 
What is that? Validation. So now, guys, let us try to understand why the database is recorded or divided into two types of sub databases. So for with the help of example. Now, guys, here. Okay, now, guys, here. Uh, let us take a live example. I wanted to buy a book. Guys, all of you concentrate well. I wanted to buy a book, a book for a subject called English. English story books. I want to buy it. Now I have been to the book hosiery, or I have been to the bookshop. I have been to the bookshop. I asked the shopkeeper to show the books that is called as English story books. So he showed me a rack which is full of multiple books. Now, guys, you tell me how do you take the decision of purchasing that book or not? Or how do you make a decision of purchasing which book? You have 100 books are there, guys. You have 100 books. Is it possible for you to sit at the shop and read the entire books and take a decision? Is it possible? No. No. Yes, guys, only. No, no. No. Only two, three answers. Is it not possible? So it's not possible to sit at the shop and read all the books. What is the way you adopt it? Tell me now. Generally, you forget about this data warehouse. Database, tell me now. Generally, example will discuss it. Tell me now. By seeing the title. Very good. By seeing the title. Or we can say that the when you take the book in your hand and open the book, you turn the pad of the book, you will find a first paper. What is that first paper consisting of? Tell me now. Index. index. Very good. Very good. Index. 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 What does the index consisting of? Tell me now. Page numbers like uh, in information. We have information like that means page number along with the that is the topic name along with the page number. Topic name along with what is that? Page number. Topic name along with what is that? Page number will be recorded. Topic name along with the page number. Suppose I wanted I saw a story there. Okay, the little angel. I saw I saw a story called Little Angel, starting at the page number twenty one and ending at the page number fifty five. So I wanted to know what is the thing you have it in this particular where the title is the Little Angel. So what is that I need to do? I need to go to that page number twenty one and start reading and end the reading at the fifty fifth page number where I'll come to know what is the story is about. Am I right, guys? What is the story is about? So whereas here in the situation. What you are doing there? You are choosing the guys. You are choosing the you are choosing the topic name along with the page number from the index paper and going to the particular paper page number and started the reading. Am I got? Am I, I, I like? Am I uh, like understandable? Everyone, uh, are you able to catch my point? Everyone, yes, guys. So now you start reading at the twenty fifth page number and end the reading at the fifty fifth page number. But you will find that topic heading in what is that index paper. So can I say like this? The book is divided into two parts. The first paper is the index paper, and the second part is the detailed part. Can I say like this, guys? Everyone. Yeah, guys. Am I audible or not? Yes, uh, we can say that. We can say that. In fact, yes, we can say that. So whereas the index paper is nothing but. Where you have that topic name along with the page number recorded in a summarized manner, whereas whereas from the second paper till the end of the book, the entire book is recorded in which manner here? Detail manner. So if you have a topic name in the index paper called the Little Angel, you wanted to know what is the story. You need to go and check in what the page number in the book, and you have to start reading. Then only your doubt will be clarified. So we can say that from the second paper till the end of the book. It is used for verification and validation. Am I right, guys? It is used for what? Verification and validation. What to verify? What to verify the information which is there on the index paper? Am I right, guys? Yes. yes. So whereas, whereas in the same way, guys, the index paper which we is there in a book will be recorded in a data warehouse, and the, from the second paper till the end of the book will be recorded in what transaction database. So it will be recorded in what is that transaction database? Getting my point, everyone. So database is like your book. Database is like your what is that book? Book has a two parts, na? What are the two parts? The first part is what is that, guys? The first part is the index paper. The first part is what is that, guys? Index paper. So here you have index paper. Am I right, guys? 
the first part is the index paper and the second part is what is that the detailed paper detailed record so whereas from the second paper till the end of the book okay uh, so the second paper till the just, uh, sorry reverse of this okay so whereas can you see here guys so the details will be recorded in what transaction database and now guys the details will be recorded in what transaction database and the summary paper will be recorded in what is that index paper that is called as what data warehouse and index paper we are using it for what whether to purchase the book or not whether to purchase the book or not to take the decision we are using the index paper in the same way data warehouse is also used for decision making system that is to decide anything to perform the analysis on the data and analysis is possible analysis is possible only on the summarized data now can you guys tell me can you take a decision by reading the whole book itself of purchasing it or not can you guys my question is that is it possible for you to read the whole book and take a decision it is possible no no it is it is possible no why not possible really possible but it will take much time for you time. am i right guys yes it will take time, time. Yes. yeah time consumption will be more so to save the time you will read the index paper am i right guys yes in the same way here also yes. here also the data within a data base called transaction database can be used for analysis but lot of time consumption will happen here in order to avoid that we store the data in what is that data warehouse getting my point all of you yes so yes. now guys now guys the book is like your database and index paper is like your data warehouse and the detail is nothing but just like your transaction database all of you clear now everyone so whereas guys whereas guys okay whereas guys here you have it okay whereas guys here can you see uh, okay let us go back to our same example of a book now guys tell me now uh, you have you took the book in your hand and you started reading now tell me according to you i'm just generally asking you according to you the index paper was developed the first or the book is written first can somebody tell me <laughs> guys according to you there is a book story book which has the index paper and as well as the book is there so which will be written first index paper will be written first or the book will be written first book book will be written first and then we will index it very good excellent so in the same way here also first of all transaction database is developed based on the transaction database only the data warehouse is developed getting my point now you have to develop the index paper in the book so guys if it is a matter of one book you can develop the index paper in how much time tell me now you have 10 lessons there 10 lessons there how much time it will take for you 10. to develop an index paper how much time will it takes yes guys how much time it will take for you to uh, write a index paper by looking into a book tell me now possibly uh, more than half an hour minutes yeah more than half an hour it will take of course let us take it one hour suppose you have to write the indexes for 1000 books how much time will it takes definitely it going to take a few days few days suppose if it is a 1 lakh books if it is 1 lakh books a quite uh, tedious process <laughs> yes yeah, so that means very large very large so here whenever you require a very large massive amount of data to be summarized to be summarized or to convert the detailed data into what is summarized manner here we require the technique so very it's a tedious process hence at the cumbersome process so to avoid that we use a technique here the technique is called as what etl we use a technique called what is it guys etl which stands for what extraction Extract, transformation and loading so extraction extraction transformation extraction transformation and what is that loading 
getting my point all of you extraction transformation and what is that you have it guys loading so this is a technique we use to convert the detailed data that is the transaction database to what is that data warehouse we use the process called extraction transformation and loading to convert this detailed data into what is that summarized manner so in short we call it as what etl else right now very more trending technique we are using it elt also elt even this we are going to see elt so whereas elt means what extract load later transform it extract and load first later transform it getting my point this is the these are the two techniques we use it whereas whenever you have a very massive amount of data to be summarized lakhs and crores of records are there which requires to be summarized in that you can use what is that etl as the technique whereas on this particular technique called etl we have the cloud service called what is that adf and adb provided azure data bricks and what is that azure data factory is provided for the same that means between the clouds or on premises between the clouds or on premises between the clouds and on premises whenever you wanted to perform the job of etl we use either what is that adb we use what is that adb or else we can also use what is that adf that is called as azure data bricks and adf stand for what is that guys azure data factory okay so now the azure data bricks is used to okay is used to perform the job of etl where it is a cui character user interface which is nothing but called as what where we have to use the language and the commands and the commands in adb we can write it in four different languages the first one is what is it we can write it here guys yes the first one the first one we can write it guys the first yeah the first one we can write it here yes guys the first one we can write it in what uh, uh, that is in the scala language in the scala and the second we write it here the first we write it in the scala and the second one we write it here in the r language okay guys and the third one we write it here on this uh, uh, okay. that is uh, uh, spark and the fourth we can also write it in python okay guys these are the four different languages in which we write the code using the adb that is nothing called as what azure data bricks okay guys azure data bricks so the azure data bricks we can write it in all these four different languages that is scala r python so hence it is mandatory for us to learn and to develop the skill set on these that is called as scala r python and mostly the commonly used language and very frequently used commands in uh, you know this uh, python uh, that is is uh, adb is the python okay that is nothing but we use the python to write the code but the same code we can process it in uh, okay uh, the same we can also process it in what uh, sql also java yeah sql guys okay. okay now so these are the things where we can write it here by using all the okay and now spark and python together we call it as py spark yes py spark guys spark and python together we call it as what py spark so here do we don't require to use the things separately here okay guys clear all of you now so these are the languages and we use it so we use the azure data bricks to perform the job of extraction transformation and loading between the on clouds and on that is between the clouds and on premises so whereas how it is used between the on premises and clouds on premises and clouds okay uh, uh, okay so on premises and clouds all those things that we will see tomorrow guys okay so that's it so now guys we will start up the class tomorrow at 10 am please connect it at 10 am everyone okay guys so thank you for uh, your yeah, time have, have any questions go ahead please go ahead now yes. yeah uh, will you yes. thank you yeah, uh, <laughs> one by one please uh.
Tell me, tell me, no issues. Uh, what is the difference that between a spark and pi spark that you have stated there in third one? So, is there any difference between a spark and Python? So, could you please tell me if there is any difference in it? Spark is basically the cluster. Spark is a cluster. Yes. Okay. So now, why we are just uh, moving towards ELT, not for the ETL? To like, make the process more simplified. Uh, could you please elaborate? To make the process more simplified in the sense, extraction is done, loading is done. So okay. whereas what we can do is, once the data is loaded, we can transform it according to the requirement of multiple users. Whereas previously, what we used to happen, extraction used to done, transformation based on a particular query, we used to work it. I mean, right. Suppose we require only the net sales amount. So we used to work on extraction of the net sales amount only on the transformation process. Isn't it or not? And once the data is loaded, only one user can like was able to use that particular query. Am I right? Now for multiple users, you have to develop the transformations. So for that, what are all the entities you require? Pull in, first of all, pull in, load it, and then transform it according to the user. So this will make the process more faster than the ETL. Uh, now, uh, yes. Uh, is Azure Databricks is ELT or ETL? Both it supports. Both it supports. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so ahead. we can use for ADF, right? Why we are using for ADB? So ADF will also will be like uh, orchestration kind of thing, right? That service is different. This service is different. Okay, guys. So you have a Honda Activa and Jupiter is there in the market, two wheelers. So if you ask me why you are using Jupiter, why not Honda Activa? Honda Activa is very famous. That is my discretion, isn't it or not? It is the requirement of the user and the client requirement. Based on that, you have to work. Obviously, when ADB is involved, more, you know, right now uh, for uh, uh, basically uh, to create the Delta Lakes, to create the Delta Lakes and access the data from the Delta Lakes and generate the reports and process the data is more faster. Delta Lake is nothing but the, uh, it is a top layer built upon the storages, built upon the storages. Okay. Wherein, you know, the most summarized data, the most used data will be stored in the Delta Lake. So that all concepts we can develop it here, okay, using the bricks, okay. So it's more faster and, you know, uh, is most faster in bricks compared to the ADF. That is, a, we can also do it in ADF also. Yes, tell me. Next Sir, would you is be it necessary to that? learn uh, R, uh, Python or Scala before uh, if you know, going if you know the, see, Anyways, anyways, we are going to see the basics of uh, uh, R and Python, okay. The basic uh, classes also, you will take it for R and Python. Need not worry about that. So you will be, uh, you, I'll be taking the basic classes. You can just have it. Uh, that will be enough. If you want more grip, obviously, you once you keep on going the things, obviously, you will get it. That's not a problem. You need not learn it separately as far as my thing is concerned. If you think that is required, so you can also learn it, but not required basically. Yeah. Yes, uh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, so timing, our ADF timing is uh, 10 to 11, right? 10 to 11 or uh, 15 or might be 11 30 also sometime because this requires one hour 15 minutes to one and a half hour time because the exercises will be very lengthy. It is not like other software, we just uh, finish it off in 45 minutes. And the our ADF recordings will be there, right? right? Pardon me? The ADF is mandatory, right? For this. Uh, uh, not mandatory guys that is different this is different okay so and we have a recording also not... available right so yeah recording you'll be get it uh, you'll get it uh, on the google drive you can have the google drive access you can have the recording that's it yeah Next. Uh, excuse me sir yeah yeah, yeah go ahead please uh, sir uh, for login into azure uh, do we need credit card yes of course you require the credit card uh, without credit card uh, is right. that no, 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 there is no way to, no, no, there is no way to uh, get in without this. If you really require it, uh, log in this thing. So what exactly happens is uh, anybody can share it, the credit card, that's not a problem, but it's allowing you the auto debit facility now. So that is the reason why people hesitate to give that. That's uh, means uh, if someone is not having the credit card, then 
you have to buy someone else credit card that's okay. it if you don't have it thank you okay. uh samit uh, yeah, one co- yeah one question is uh, i have like uh, uh, as i can check on the uh, uh, durga soft sa- uh, site for azure databricks so there is not uh, too much information about uh, this course as your data break so can you please explain things what uh, exactly include in this one and so that that would be help for us in the as your data break what information uh, do you read, need it really uh, yeah uh, the means uh, for the course that what we are going to com- uh, cover in this one like as your data breaks uh, what are the services delta lakes dlt pipelines and uh, for that i just want to do uh, like uh, we also i think uh, require for the adls as well is to mount the data so these things in synapse uh, basics yeah yes yeah, syn- yeah synapse 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 will take up obviously integration in data from the synapse integration data from the adf also we will see one scenario integration of data from oracle snowflake all this is we'll see this okay and basically integration means getting the data getting integrated and getting the data here how to get the data and how the data is loaded after the data is loading where do we store the data and uh, how to create the delta lakes and the data how the delta lake will receive the data all this is part we are going to see the contents brochure is there on the uh, you know obviously the web page of uh, durga soft if you want in detail then you have to attend the class and only you'll come to know what is it anything else required uh, yeah apart from that one uh, is there, i mean i mean azure data bricks is uh, t- firstly built on a uh, top of a scalar right yeah okay so will there be any chance to get a chance to write a programs in a scala uh, yeah. is there, is there any obviously we no, have we any write. sort of a, a I mean, like a modules that we can work on a scala or uh, we can just um, integrate the scala with the pyspar is there any such such, such type of uh, uh, modules will be there in a class yes scala you can write it the code directly and uh, you can also have you know the pyspar you can use it on the same I'll... the thing is uh, the thing is i wanted to uh, know that is there any cha- i mean is there any module that we can integrate a scala notebook with a pyspark notebook uh, yes. is there any sort of a modules will be there in our class i mean a classroom so that we can uh, yes. have a glance of it yes yes definitely definitely we'll have a module on this yeah sure thank you so much thank you yeah yes sir uh, so in this course we are covering all this scala or pyspark and sql or only pyspark sir no i uh, will see the code in all the languages scala r python and sql uh one more thing uh, even we can integrate with other uh, uh, online plat- uh, cloud platform uh, cloud vendors like you know uh, aws uh, gcp uh, as everything we can use the same thing right uh, right, uh, right sir mm, yeah of course okay definitely we can use it sir will we cover uh, um delta lake data lake yes, and yes, yes. that's what i told you delta lake is also covered data cosmos lake is, db. yes cosmos db delta lake data lake everything is azure sql yes what is so, yeah yeah yes on azure this, analytics also... service basically azure. that is yes analytics service is nothing but it is a specially designed uh, you know uh, service for analysis uh, related issues that is you want to perform some analysis analysis in the sense you want some uh, predictive analysis or you want to design some models okay that is machine learning models you have to design it that you can design it basically okay. uh, sir, one more thing uh, yeah 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 part see. of it the part of it i can show you is the integration okay. and basic usage i can tell you but uh, detail that does not cover our curriculum yes tell me Okay. Yes, sir. Can okay. can we cover uh, complex transformations, pipelines as well, sir? In this course, yes, of course, yes, of course. Uh, one the... more thing, sir. Even this data bricks uh, can 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 connect with you know on premises uh, databases yes. as well. Yes, okay. yes, of course. Yes, of okay. course, it connects. Yes, clear, clear. Thank you. Sir. And the snowflake is part of uh, this uh, are different or it's different. Cover? No, 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 okay. different, different. But I will show you the integration. i will see i will show you how to go and uh, you know uh, uh, oh that is uh, configure the snowflake how to create a snowflake account everything i will show you 
and later on that integration okay. is also will, will be seen there okay it's not a problem okay, okay. thanks sir yeah i got it yeah. any other questions guys uh will this be helpful for us uh, dp203 exam certification yes of course it is helpful helpful now you can write it with this sure. that will be that much input it will be given to you that's it okay so as as of now the syllabus of the dpt03 is a vast so everything will be covered here so like uh, starting from the like uh, decu uh, data security imply implications yes that we discussed data security implications we have not included but i will see that it is included it's not there currently yeah okay Thank you so much, Samir. Thank you. Any other questions, Ma? Samir, what are the what is the certification for uh, Azure DataBricks? Is uh, different from Azure Data Factory? And, yes, it's uh, different. It's different. Okay. That has to do nothing with this uh, uh, the the ADF. It is totally the certification le certification level of uh, ADB is different from the uh, Azure Data Factory. For each service, we have uh, for each certification like ADF one certification, ADB one certification, Cosmos DB one certification. Not or, Cosmos or DB, not Cosmos DB. Uh, Cosmos DB, yeah, Cosmos DB is there. SQL for one SQL Azure SQL, you have another certifications. Level of certifications are different on this. Azure Del Data Lake, we have. No, no, no. That's not. That, that's not basically a separate Delta Lake. There is no certification on this Delta Lake. I don't think so. But it is combined with the. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me. It's a technique basically. On the technique, you will not have any certification. Okay. Uh, um, Data Lake, Delta Lake. Can you please one word. What is that one? Data lake is the base layer on a base layer called data lake. Delta lake is designed upon a data lake. Okay. A data lake is the base layer upon a data lake. Delta lake is designed. For what purpose we can use both data layers? for putting up the data, putting up the data, which is, you know, uh, uh, that is nothing but the more uh, uh, for there is you know uh, formatted data which is used for specific kind of analysis a specific kind of data will be kept into this delta layer delta lake okay. anyways i can explain you once we see that topic okay yeah so, sure sure yeah what is it another another thanks. questions thanks Amit. thank you okay any other questions guys and right now only uh, 10 am or any other morning or evening for no only adb is only 10 am there is no multiple batches i told you i um, have a question yeah please what is scala actually scala is basically a language uh, basically a language but uh, like what language uh, how it is written using java or python or c or c ja ja java only java Yes. Scala is developed on Java. Okay. okay. Yes, tell me, ma. Any, any other question? Sir, what kind of uh, job profiles we can apply after this uh, curriculum? A bricks engineer. Okay. Uh, the data bricks engineer, you can write it, the profiles. Okay. And uh, basically, the major task here as a Azure data bricks engineer will be getting the data from the various platforms data available whether it is on the cloud or on the on-premises environment and transformation obviously you will have the transformations operators are there uh, and you have you know many kind of uh, uh, algorithm that is in many kind of operators and uh, transformation techniques we have it so we transform the data accordingly and once the data is a transformed off okay so that is the ranking of the data you can do it okay and uh, you can apply any kind of transformation technique and once the data is loaded into the target on the target basically the target is let us say data lake is your target now now the re the data the client requires to access the data from the delta lakes so he wants the delta lakes you don't want the data lake so now what you need to do is the major technique or the major this thing of is to design a delta lake to create a delta lake 
upon a data lake and now the you will be providing the access for further analyst or data scientist to access the data from the delta lake directly not from the data lakes getting my point okay okay sir is it also used in uh, cloud migrations yes of course yeah i have a question is it possible to create the delta lakes in the adf of course we can create the delta lakes so that that requires again a programming language or sql is sufficient the concept is different in uh, adf you don't require any programming language you can create it adf basically a menu driven you will not have amount of coding there basically okay no coding at all in adf no coding at all in adf okay. yeah. how much the certification will cost the adf certification i'm not sure guys you can just check on the web page so after completing this course uh, can we uh, do certification for adf for adb you can do the certification for anything you require it but uh, after completing this adb you can go the for certification of adb okay 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 that's it okay any other questions uh, tomorrow's class link is going to be same right same same link for 8 days okay same link will be there for 8 days coming 8 days after 8 days will the link will be changed okay thank you guys thank you for attending all of you uh, have a nice day i'm just ending the class yeah thank yeah, you thanks so thank, have you. A great day. thank you thank you thank you Bye. okay guys so uh let us give me a brief introduction about myself uh then we'll move further with the subject okay see my name is samir and uh, i'll be your faculty for this adb that is azure data bricks and uh, uh i have around uh, 10 years of experience in it industry and uh, on the cloud since the past 3 years i'm working on to the cloud technologies prior to that i worked on on you know <coughs> this is uh, olap um there is various tools of olaps and this thing and uh, even the informatica i have worked on on premises now guys uh, since the past three years i'm working on this uh, azure uh, data bricks and data factory where i'm supporting up in a project in a us based company okay and uh, apart from this uh, uh, the course uh, you know what we are going to do, do it right now that is uh, azure data bricks the duration will be uh, 60 hours it will be calculated in the hours okay uh, 60 hours and uh, you will have uh, that is uh, monday to friday okay five days a week uh, that is uh, five days a week and uh, if required we will also have it on saturdays okay so five days a week monday to friday and uh, if required we'll also have on saturdays that is the uh, there is structure of this and uh, that's it okay guys so any doubts for me or any uh, thing you want to ask me now so i have one question like whether we get a uh, completion certificate like we have completed you, this one yeah, they will give you that is not an issue but that will not that is going that's not going to work you out companies is not going to accept that you have done it from so and so this thing okay so better rather than that completing this you can write a certifications of bricks that's better okay uh obviously okay. They, they will provide you if you require they will give you that you have done it here okay 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 any other questions ma okay So now, guys, let us start with the bricks here. So today is the uh, demo session and the introduction session of this uh, ADB. So now, guys, let us start first of all. What is Azure Data Engineering? So what is the Azure Data Engineering? Is basically the Azure? Yeah, go ahead, please. Please go ahead. Was it who raised the hand? So that is uh, who Hello, raised sir. the hand. Yeah. Hello. Ah. Uh. Uh, sir, without knowing about uh, Azure Data Factory, can we learn uh, DataBricks is possible for me? 
yes of course not required to learn the ad edf okay not okay. required both are the different uh, services we have it okay guys <clears throat> so now you have the azure okay. data engineering so under this azure data engineering we have the following services you can say azure data engineering under this azure data engineering we have the following services so azure data engineering is uh, provided by the microsoft it is a product of microsoft so microsoft is marketing their product the cloud products with a name called what azure with a name called what azure as you have the more supermarket they are marketing their product uh, that is uh, that is birla is marketing their product grocery stores with a name called more in the same way microsoft is uh, uh, that is something but uh, that is uh, offering their services of the cloud with a name called what azure okay whereas the azure data engineering has the following services in it the first one is called as the azure data bricks adb okay that we call it as what azure data bricks okay we call it as what azure data bricks azure data bricks and uh, whereas apart from this azure data bricks we also have the azure data factory which we call it as what adf and then apart from this we also have what is it synapse okay so these are all the services guys these are all what is that services okay boss let us make this session an interactive session i want you guys to interact with me during this uh, session <clears throat> so now guys these are all the services of the microsoft provided here okay in the form of what service in the form of what service so what is that you have it as your data bricks as your data factory and the synapse etc now guys before we go ahead with this let us try to understand first two things what is that what is a clouds and what is on premises what is clouds and what is on premises what is cloud and what is on premises okay what is on premises and what is the clouds okay so we also call it as what on prem we also call it as what on prem so what is the on prem and what is the clouds let us try to understand this yes guys any uh, there is nothing but uh, any idea about this clouds anyways i'll explain you but i want you guys to tell me something what are basically clouds and on prem if you have any idea yeah go ahead so cloud is uh, we can access from anywhere mm -hmm. uh, and on premises uh, is something like we the data or the services that are hosting our premises like if some company is uh, having some data that their their own server their own network everything is set up for themselves within their premises so we call it as prem on premises and if it is a cloud so like azure Amazon Web Service, the Google is also their data is not uh, present in their premises, so they don't need to uh, work upon the server management, uh, network, ex hardware, etc. Yes, this is very, what very we good. can say. Thank you, thank you, very good. Okay, now guys, so let us try to understand first of all what is the clouds and what is on premises. Okay, so what Gaurav said is perfectly fine. now guys let us elaborate it and uh, let us try to yeah uh, arvind that tell me sir can you provide uh, azure portal for us azure portal hmm. means azure portal sir azure login portal for practice practice it requires basically we'll discuss it after the class i'll discuss it the thing okay please okay sir okay okay now let us try to understand first of all what is basically the clouds and on premises so guys before we move ahead with what is a cloud and what is an on premises system okay let us try to see an example here i'm just giving you an example okay guys so all of us having the mobiles am i right guys we all have the mobile phones am i right every one of us is using a mobile phone nowadays am i right guys every one of us is using the a mobile phone and even the mobile phone what type of mobile phones we are using smartphones am i right guys smartphones every one of us has a smartphone irrespective of the brand you have it yes guys everyone is using the smartphone or not please yes yes 
what about rest of all you people are not using this uh, smartphone yes, yes, guys we are using yes, yeah, we are so using. now guys using. when we okay when we use the smartphone we will have yes we will have we will have memory in your mobile phone am i right guys you will have memory in your mobile phone now tell me what will what what is the amount of memory you will have in your mobile phone can you tell me whichever the phone you are using it what is the gb 8 gb is uh, one memory and apart from this yes guys anyone else who is using the mobile phone what is your memory tell me now up to what level uh, you can store ha uh? 12 gb 12 gb ha uh? 12 gb if somebody is using the iphone so the iphone is providing the highest memory as what 256 gb am i right guys am i right everyone you have the 256 gb provided by the iphone likewise every one of us has a smartphone and every one of us the memory in our mobile phone now tell me why this memory is used why are you using this memory can you tell me guys i'll talk in your language only why why do we use this memory can you tell me guys if it is a ram so for performance we are using it if it is storage for storing local data yes exactly that is nothing but basically basically what we do here is to store the information in your uh, mobile phone that is in the form of photographs videos or some contacts or whatever the type of data you will have it whatever the type of data you will have it to store that particular data we use the mobile phone memory isn't it or not now guys suppose you have a la large amount of uh, you know videos and uh, photos in your mobile phone which is important for you and you have saved it in your mobile phone and now your mobile phone memory is full the whole 256 gb can you see here the whole 256 gb memory is full now how the to whole 256 gb memory is full now so now guys tell me now if the whole 256 gb memory is full what is the other way you adopt it for extra memory can you tell me we can buy and uh, is yes, you can buy an sd card that is scan disk card isn't it or not am i right guys you can buy a sd card of more memory some post 32 gb i have bought it or else even uh, you have what is that uh, around uh, some 256 gb uh, you got it sd card that is also full now so now do you have any slots in your mobile phone to enter one more sd card guys you will be having n one more uh, slot to enter into your sd card uh, that is mobile phone or not only one sd card slot is provided in the mobile phones whereas uh, apart from this one more uh, that is one is full so do you provide can you provide or can you store that uh, uh, data by buying one more uh, sd card and inserting it in your mobile phone that means can you insert two sd cards in your mobile phone tell me now guys can you insert two sd cards at a time in your mobile phone no no that not is not possible no yeah only one slot is given so you can enter up to here so 256 gb you can store it so this is nothing but the configuration of a mobile phone whereas whereas everyone just concentrate well whereas guys as you have a memory suppose you have to store here suppose guys you have to store a memory of 1000 gb more that means already you saved the memory of 256 gb plus 256 gb that means how much gb 512 okay am i right guys 512 512 memory gb data is already full in your mobile phone 512 gb data is already full in your mobile phone now i require to store one more 1000 gb one more 1000 gb guys one more 1000 gb data you need to store it in my mobile phone now tell me what is the alternative do you have it uh definitely we can have a cloud based storage devices very good that's a okay that's a that's a good answer now guys suppose now the question is suppose i have how much memory in my mobile phone can you tell me now what is the amount of memory i have it right now 512 gb how much memory of uh, there is how much amount of memory i have in mobile phone my uh, uh, how much amount of memory we have it in my mobile phone 512 gb guys suddenly i lost my mobile phone one day suddenly i lost my mobile phone one day so now guys tell me now if i lost my mobile phone 512 gb data which is there in my mobile phone 
which is there in internal memory of my mobile phone okay, and as well as in the okay. sd card as mm-hmm. well as in the sd card will it be there or will it okay, uh, will i have to use lose the same uh, everything will be lost uh, yes. everything is lost yes, yes. yeah everything is lost siri you want to tell something siri you want to tell something okay if not just put it in yourself in mute mode okay so okay so now guys everything will be lost i will be losing everything that is 512 gb data but can i recover that even if i buy a mobile phone yes guys can i recover that is it is there any way yes we have if we store it in a, uh, if we store it in a, uh, any online platform so no not yeah. i'm not talking about the online platform now okay. i lost my mobile phone everything is there in my mobile phone only okay uh, that is 512 gb of data is there in my mobile phone yeah. i lost my mobile phone can i recover it no nope. uh, not at all no way to recover it am i right guys yes. no way to recover mobile phone gone means my data is gone everything is gone i'll not get it is it clear or not i'll not get anything so whereas in order to overcome this problem in order to overcome this problem what is the alternative we use it in order to overcome this problem we use an alternative what is it alternative that is nothing but if we store this 512 gb data along with my mobile phone if i store it in a, a copy of it a copy of it into my google drive google drive so now guys can i recover it if i store it in the google drive tell me now my data yes. 512 gb data is st- stored in my mobile phone as well as the same data is stored even in the google drive can i recover it back even if i lose my mobile phone yes yes i yes. can recover it this is a way there is a way now guys but what is the problem here the problem here is that the problem here is that the google drive provides a default memory of 15 gb only how much memory does it a google drive and your google account gets it with uh, this thing can you tell me guys yeah how much memory you'll get it tell me now you'll get the 15 gb 15 i want an interactive session guys only one or two people are interacting what about rest of you yes guys please interact with me okay guys so here you have what is that 15 gb memory is by default provided by the google isn't it or not but how much memory i need to store it right now 512 gb what is that 512 gb so what is that you need to do tell me now what is that you need to do guys yeah we need to buy storage very good we need to buy the storage we need to buy the yes guys buy the storage okay that means you will have to pay some cost guys you will have to pay some cost and buy the storage of 512 gb that means so they will charge you on the yearly basis or they will charge you on the quarterly basis or even some on the monthly basis you can buy it and you can store it okay so whereas after storing the data into my google drive even if i lost my mobile phone the lost data can be recovered it back simply what i need to do i need to buy a mobile phone new mobile phone new handset and in that handset we need to configure my mail id along with my password and use an option called synchronize so automatically everything which is there in the drive will be retrieve it back will be retrieve it back and restore it to my mobile phone am i right guys Yes. yes am i right yes yes so yes. now yes, yes. now guys who is taking care of the security of your data who is taking care of the security of your data tell me now google google okay who is the google is taking the security of your data that no one should able to access your data unless until the username and password is satisfied am i right guys so google is taking care of your data that means whenever you require it the google will provide you and whereas uh, the security of your data the access of your data everything is a responsibility of google now one fine day now one fine day i immediately uh, left for us so i am there i am there in us now guys i have already configured i have already configured a google drive of 512 gb wherein i have stored the entire data after going there i have changed my number so can i access the data which i have saved in the google drive even after going to us tell me now yes sir possible yes possible that means obviously it is possible simply what happens the google drive will work on your email id and password am i right guys 
So if you enter that email ID and password, you can access the data from anywhere from the globe. Am I right, guys? Anywhere from the globe. So we can say that the access of data, the security of data is the responsibility of what is that? Google. Am I right, guys? Is the responsibility of what? Google. So unknowingly, what you're doing there, we all are using the cloud platform. Isn't it or not? Unknowingly, we all are have moved from no, that is nothing we have moved from what is that this now that is the on-premises uh platform to cloud only that means from the sd cards sd card is your what sd card memory or your mobile phone memory is your sd card memory or your mobile phone memory is on-premises memory whereas we have automatically moved from on-premises memory and what is that on-premises memory and sd card memory to what is that google drive memory that means unknowingly we all have moved to what is that we all have moved to what is it guys cloud system we have already moved to what is that cloud platform am i right guys everyone <coughs> yes, guys. yes sir. sorry so we have moved to what is yes. that the cloud platform all of us okay so whereas now after moving to the cloud pl cloud platform it has become easier for us to access the data from any device you require it from any device you require it sharing has also become so easier so whereas security has also become very comfortable okay so whereas only this is possible because of the cloud platform whereas whereas as we are an individuals we have a little amount of data when it comes to the business entities what is that business entities will have a very massive amount of data very massive amount of data and they want the data to be secured and access it at whenever the time requires. And every time the corporates have fed up by buying the licenses, license every time you require a software, they need to buy the license. They have to pay the cost for the license. They need to purchase that software. They need to install it. And then they have to put the software. So in order to avoid that, if you require a software, don't do it by yourself. Simply inform your cloud provider. Simply inform your cloud provider. He will buy it for you. He will buy the license for you. Simply he is going to provide.